Now by a pair of Democratic senators, Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and Senator Maggie Hassan of New Hampshire. Um, let me start with you, Senator uh, Blumenthal, because you're on the committee. Um, are you involved in the negotiations happening right now about the contours of testimony next week? All of us committee members are involved, at least indirectly. And the simple fact is that the Republicans leading that committee have imposed a completely arbitrary and irrational deadline. They should be insisting, in fact, that the FBI reopen its investigation. They should be insisting that there be other witnesses. In the interest of uncovering the truth and basic fairness, they should be insisting that uh, Dr. Blaisley be given an opportunity to set the terms of her coming forward. That's a basic foundational principle in dealing with all victims and survivors of sexual assault. But they are taking just the opposite tack. What do you think, Senator Hassan, about the idea of um, the Republicans on that committee, it's all men, it's 11 men, bringing in a, a female attorney, a woman, to do the questioning? Well, you know, this should be about getting to the truth, not political optics. But let's take a step back here. Um, we know that women who come forward with allegations of sexual assault, with stories like Dr. Ford's, have historically been vilified, they've been diminished, they've been doubted, even though we know how prevalent sexual assault is in our society. And what we have seen is that we all need to do better in listening to women, investigating these claims, taking them seriously. And the Senate needs to do better. So now you think back to 1991, to Anita Hill's testimony in that hearing. That hearing had an FBI investigation beforehand. It went on for three days. I think it included multiple, multiple witnesses. And even that was considered to be grossly unfair and inadequate. And now today, Senate Republicans are talking about a process that is far worse. We should be trying to fulfill our constitutional obligation to get to the truth here, to vet this candidate fully. And I continue to be just amazed that the Republicans aren't insisting on an FBI investigation, which is the kind of foundation you need to have a productive, effective hearing in which you can actually get to the truth with multiple witnesses, because there are more than two witnesses yes. in this matter, according to Dr. Ford's account. What do you ascribe the, I mean, they, here, here, let me give you the argument that Republicans have been making, and you can respond to it, um, that, yeah. this is, that this was all done in bad faith, that the ranking member, Senator Feinstein, sat on this, and then it leaked out, and it was a bomb exploded at the last minute as a sort of desperate attempt to forestall this, and the mishandling has brought us to this perilous moment. I want to get both of your reactions. I'll start with you, Senator Blumenthal, yeah. to that argument. Uh, let's be very clear. The foundational principle of dealing with sexual assault is that the survivors have the right to come forward when they wish, to tell their story as they wish, and identify themselves when they think it's appropriate. That is the principle right. that Senator Feinstein followed. And the timing issue... Well, it leaked, though. I mean, someone didn't follow it. After six weeks in the United States Senate, a lot of things leaked. But here's the other important point. The timing here is solely the result of the Republican leadership setting this arbitrary October 1 deadline and trying to ram through this nomination on a timetable that is totally, cravenly and blatantly political. And if their instinct and intention was to uncover the truth, they would insist on an FBI investigation. Otherwise, we're just going to have a sham and a charade show hearing, not a real hearing. Senator Hassan. Well, look, yes, a real hearing should happen, and then the process that follows should be determined by what they find out in the hearing. But look, this is just, these allegations from uh, Republicans are just shameful. Dr. Ford has had to flee her home. Her children, her husband and she have been subjected to death threats. Uh, she is trying. She has stepped forward. She has been brave and courageous in bringing forward these charges against an incredibly powerful person. And what she is being met with is um, a rush to defend this person rather than get at the truth. You know, the benefit of the doubt here, to quote, uh, Senator Robert Byrd, uh, back, I think, in about 1991, the benefit of the doubt should go to the court, 
and to the country. That's our job. And it is absolutely shameful to be playing politics with this. And there is an effect, Chris, uh, in the larger context on other survivors who are deterred from coming forward. You know, I spent a, a part of today with a couple of survivors and advocates who described their own experiences very much like this one when they felt doubt, self-blame, guilt, stigma. They waited years to come forward. One in every six women in America are assaulted or raped. This crime is underreported because of precisely the fear that now is being realized, the nightmare for Dr. Blasey Ford. And the way that some of our Republican colleagues are talking about her with utter insensitive, insensitivity and hostility simply illustrates the problem she may encounter at this hearing. Senator Hassan, do you have faith that there's persuadability on the Republican side, that there are members, colleagues of yours um, that have an open enough mind that you think that, that something can be accomplished here in terms of a presentation of the evidence? Well, I certainly hope so. And that's why I think it is so important that we get this hearing right. I think it is so important that Dr. Ford's concerns about her safety and about feeling respected in the process uh, really need to be uh, honored. And I think that's why it's so important uh, for there to be serious good faith here. I am concerned when I hear some of my Republican colleagues say that, you know, we'll have the hearing on Monday and then we'll vote on Wednesday when, in fact, right. what happens in an investigation and hearing should then determine when and if a vote happens. Yeah, and you have the uh, the chief counsel on, on the Judiciary Committee for Senator Grassley saying we're going to confirm him, which seems to be sort of tipping the hand exactly. a little bit. Uh, Senator Richard Blumenthal sure and does. Senator Maggie Hassan, thank you both for being with me. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.